Keyboard shortcuts are one of the best ways to speed up your workflow in Photoshop, and this video is going to demonstrate some of the best shortcuts for photographers. Before we dive in too deep here, it's a good idea to pause the video so you can get a pen and paper to write down your favorite key commands. My name is Mike Wardinsky. Let's dive in. To kick things off, I want to talk about the most common keyboard shortcuts for tools that photographers will use the most often. You'll notice my toolbar is on the right hand side of the screen. By default, yours will be on the left. And let's go ahead and dive in here. The first tool is the move tool. If I hit the V as in Victor key, that brings up the move tool. And that allows me to move the selected layer within the canvas. One way to remember this shortcut is that move has a pretty strong V sound in it, move. So that can help you remember V for move. Next, we have the lasso tool. This is an easy one, L for lasso. That allows us to make a selection. You'll use this a lot if you get into advanced Photoshop editing, so highly recommend remembering the lasso tool. Moving down the line, we have W for quick selection tool. Now this one doesn't make much sense, W and quick selection, but if you look at the quick selection tool nested underneath it is wand. So W for wand, and that's why W is the shortcut here because the two tools are nested together. And so W is the keyboard shortcut for every single tool underneath the sub toolbar. So if I were to click magic wand tool and then switch over to my move tool by hitting V and then hit W again, and you can see the wand tool is what gets selected. If I were to change this back to quick selection tool, go back up to, let's do lasso this time, L for lasso, and then back to W for wand, it takes us to the quick selection tool. I hope that makes sense. And let's keep on moving because we got a lot to cover. The next tool is the crop tool, and this one's pretty easy, C for crop. So that's pretty easy to remember. Moving down the line, we have the healing brush, and that is J. This one's hard, I don't really have a good way to remember this. But if you use this tool a lot, you'll remember it just by default. One way you could remember it is J for joint. The bandage might go around a joint. Um, I don't know, maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't. but. Again, if you use it enough, you'll remember it. Moving along, we have B. This is a big one, B for brush. You'll use the brush a lot in Photoshop, not for what I just did, but for masking and other techniques. Right underneath brush, we have the clone stamp. This is another easy one, S for clone stamp, and that allows us to clone parts of the image. And this tool is really useful for touching up blemishes, dust spots, and all sorts of different things. If you happen to use text in your images or graphics, T is a really good key command to remember, um, T for text. Moving along, we have Z for zoom. If I hit the Z key that pulls up my magnifying glass, I can drag the mouse in and out to the left and right, and that allows me to zoom in and out of the image. And while we're on the topic of zooming, here's another great key command. This one has a modifier key, command zero, or control zero on a PC. That fits the canvas to your screen. So if I were to zoom out here, and then Command-0, zero, Control-0 zero on a PC, we get to our, our full screen here. And here's another quick little tip on zooming. If I zoom in here, and then hold the space bar, my cursor turns to the hand, and then I can just drag with the mouse around my image. To get back to fitting to the screen, Command or Control Zero, and there we go. One last set of zoom shortcuts that are really useful are Command Plus and Command Minus. That'd be Control Minus and Control Plus on a PC. That allows you to zoom in and out of the image really quickly. A quick tip that I forgot to mention is that anytime there are sub tools such as this, if you hold Shift, it will cycle through each tool. So let me demonstrate that here. So if I hold shift and hit the J key for brush, you'll see that the tools automatically cycle through. We've already talked about the brush tool, but I'd like to talk about a few more shortcuts that are related to the brush tool. So again, B is our shortcut for the brush. And let's talk about brush size. The left bracket key shrinks the brush. The right bracket key increases the brush size. Next, we have the X key, which will toggle between the foreground color and the background color. So if I hit X, you'll see it switches to black. If I hit X again, it switches to the foreground, which is currently set to white. You can change these simply by clicking and dragging in this screen, and there we go. And lastly, keys one through zero set the opacity. One is 10%, 
Five is 50%, and nine is 90%, zero is 100. Okay, now that I've made a mess of this image, let's continue. Moving along, let's talk about some common masking and selection shortcuts. I'll go ahead and choose the quick selection tool with the W key. I'm gonna select my sky here, nice easy selection. And now I can invert the selection by holding Shift Command I. That would be Shift Control I on a PC. And you can see now my foreground is selected instead of my sky. Now there will be times when you want to delete a selection and to do that, that's very easy. Remember Command D on a Mac, that'd be Control D on a PC and that deletes the selection. So remember D for delete. There will also be times where you might want to bring back a selection that you just had. Maybe you accidentally deleted it or you need to use it again. So the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift Command D that would be shift control D on a PC, and that brings the selection back. The marching ants are useful to see where your selection is, but sometimes they can get in the way when you're doing really fine edits along the edge. So sometimes it can be useful to hide these ants. And the way you do that is command H on a Mac, control H on a PC. And if this is your first time hitting that keyboard command, Photoshop's gonna ask you if you want to hide Photoshop itself or hide extras. So make sure you go ahead and choose the hide extras option in order for this keyboard command to work the way I just demonstrated. And if I wanna bring the ants back, command or control H and they're back. I'll zoom to fit screen, command zero. Okay, so now let's talk about layer masking. There is no keyboard shortcut to create a layer mask, but you can create one and I'm gonna be creating a video on how to do that. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. That way you'll be notified once that video comes out. And if you're finding this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button as well. Okay, so now let's create a mask. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom, hit the layer mask icon, and you can see our sky has disappeared. That's because our foreground was selected. So whatever is selected becomes the mask. Whatever isn't selected gets cut out. And here's our mask here. If I hold option and click on this mask, that allows us to see the mask in the canvas. If I wanna see the pixel view again, all I have to do is come back to the layer and click on the pixel-based layer. Now there will be times where you need to invert a mask and inverting a mask is very easy. If I click on the mask, hit Command-I on a Mac, that's Control-I on a PC, and now you can see our mask has been inverted. We can see the sky, but no foreground. Additionally, I can create a selection based off a mask simply by command clicking on that mask or control clicking on a PC. And you can see our marching ants are back. To turn a mask off, if you hold the shift key and click on the mask, that turns the mask off. You can see I got this red X here. And now I'm gonna deselect my marching ants, command or control D. I'll turn my mask back on, shift click here. And I'm gonna throw this mask into the trash, but I'm gonna hold the option key on a Mac, alt on a PC, because I don't wanna apply the mask to the pixel base layer. And I'm gonna throw that right in my trash can here. And there we go, we've deleted our mask. Now there may be times where you wanna blend two photos together and maybe you just wanna brush part of one photo on top of another. To make that make sense, I'm gonna show you I've got two photos here. I've turned the top layer off and you can see I've got a black and white version underneath. So I'm gonna turn the top layer back on and make sure I have this layer selected and I'm gonna add a mask, but I'm gonna add an inverted mask. So basically meaning this entire layer will be invisible and all I will be able to see is the black and white version beneath it. So I'm gonna hold the option on a Mac, Alt on a PC and click on the mask icon. And you can see this layer has disappeared and now all we see is the black and white version down beneath. Now, this is useful if I just wanna paint in a brush of color here. And it doesn't necessarily need to be color, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now this is sort of an unconventional example, but I wanted it to be obvious what I was doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my brush tool. B is the shortcut. I'll shrink the brush size with the left bracket key. I wanna to switch my brush to white. Right now it's set to black, so I'll hit the X key. And now I can paint white onto this black mask. And let's start with 50% of opacity. So I'll hit the five key. And you can see I'm brushing in there. If I wanted to go into 100% opacity, I'll hit zero. And there we go. Okay, we've covered some really great selection and masking shortcuts. And I've got a really special one I wanna share with you now. You're gonna thank me for this later. And I'm gonna show you how to create a clipping mask. So right now I've got two layers that are absolutely identical. 
And we're gonna add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go over here and let's do, let's do a hue saturation and maybe I'll take the saturation down. And what happens is anything underneath this adjustment layer gets this effect. So if I turn this top layer off, you can see the bottom layer is also desaturated. But we can tell Photoshop to apply this effect only to the layer underneath it. And the way we do that is through a clipping mask. So if I hold the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and just navigate between the two layers, you see I get this little icon of a square with an arrow pointing down. So I'm just gonna click right here, and you can see I have now created a clipping mask. So if I turn this layer underneath the adjustment layer off, you can see the layer below is unaffected by the mask. But if I turn the layer above it on, you can see that layer is getting the effect of the hue saturation layer. And if you get into editing where you're using many layers in Photoshop, you'll definitely want to use this clipping mask at one point or another. When you're working with a lot of layers in Photoshop, there may be a time where you want to turn just one layer on at a time. And the keyboard shortcut to do that is Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and then click on the eye icon that you want to solo. So if I click at this top one, you can see that's the only eye left on, everything else gets turned off. While holding the Option or Alt key, I can click that again, and the eyes revert to they originally were. Now one thing you wanna be careful of is if you have a lot of layers and some of them are on and some of them are off like this one, if I hold Option and then I click down here, I can't revert back to my original eye state. So I need to remember which ones were on and off. So typically best practice is to hold Option, solo the layer, and then click again to unsolo the layer. And then if you wanna see a different layer soloed, I can come down here and click, and then click again. Now I'd like to talk about some system-wide key commands that you should remember. Command or Control A is select all. Command or Control C is copy. Command or Control V as in Victor is paste. And Command or Control Z is undo. We've covered a lot in this video, but don't worry, I've only got two more really useful key commands to show you. But before we get there, don't forget to head over to naturemike.com for some great infield workshops, private post-processing lessons, and tutorials. All right, so looking here in our layers panel, we have a lot of layers. And there may be a time where you want to flatten all of these. So we're gonna select our first layer, and then I'll shift click on the last layer, and then I'm gonna hit Command E. And that's gonna flatten everything into one single layer. Now this is destructive, so don't use this unless you really know that you don't need those other layers. Now I'm gonna undo that, Command Z, and now I'm gonna show you a non-destructive way to blend all these layers together while still retaining each individual layer. So we're gonna select our top layer again, and now we're gonna hold Command Option Shift E. And you can see that created a stamp layer above everything else while still leaving all the other layers beneath intact. And if you're a PC user, it's gonna be Command Option Shift E. Thanks for watching and click that video on the right side of the screen to learn how to set up the Photoshop workspace for photography. I'm Mike Wardinsky, see you in the next video.